this is a very important role. Really, this is a, a, an extremely important role because in uh, uh, societies of cardiology in the country, especially in mine in Lebanon, they are doing a, a lot of projects, a lot of things to really uh, uh, endorse the awareness and to encourage uh, physicians and uh, uh, patients and ordinary people who are not uh, patients to uh, uh, really look at this uh, uh, heart failure disease as uh, something that is uh, really important and really uh, uh, catastrophic. As you know, it's uh, uh, more uh, important and more severe especially on lifespan, it's more than cancer. So this is very important and an epidemiologic uh, problem in the whole world. So what they are really doing is, uh, is uh, projects, is uh, uh, awareness campaigns in, in the remote areas, especially, uh, is, uh, especially in the May, in month of heart failure. Uh, this is uh, what they are doing. And uh, recently, we really uh, uh, sent letters to the TPA, the third party uh, uh, agents to uh, uh, sponsor and to uh, uh, reimburse uh, uh, biomarkers that we need to uh, diagnose uh, these the diseases a little bit earlier and to have a prognostic uh, value of them. Uh, the journey from the uh, diagnosis uh, uh, of, uh, of heart failure or the early stages of the heart failure till death, I can assure you that wherever uh, and whenever you ask for a, a biomarker, a cardiac biomarker, and especially anti pro BNP, because there is a lot of evidence, more than 3,500 publications on this uh, subject. So wherever you ask for it, uh, you will get benefit. In the diagnosis, in the early diagnosis, you will get benefit. Now, recently, in the diabetic population, uh, you know, it's 60% of heart failure patients in the Middle East. So uh, in this population, you can also have uh, a benefit to, to diagnose earlier, to, uh, to be aggressive in the follow-up, to be aggressive in the treatment, maybe to start uh, uh, renin angiotensin aldosterone system inhibitors earlier, and uh, to have a better uh, outcome. If you go to, uh, to the prognosis, you have data. If you want to fine-tune the, the doses of your uh, heart failure drugs, also you have data uh, on it. Uh, if you want to see patients, uh, unfortunately, before he dies, you have data uh, on it. So during the whole journey, the uh, uh, cardiac biomarkers are very, very helpful, and uh, uh, we can now uh, use them with uh, uh, with respect to everything we are going to do after this, uh, uh, our attitude towards our patients, it's very important. And uh, there is also data about quality of life. Cardiac biomarkers are related to quality of life. And in the heart failure patients, we are, because we are talking about uh, heart failure and heart failure patients, it is linked to the quality of life of the, uh, of the patient and it's one of the aim of, for example, the U.S. European Society of Cardiology uh, objectives is one of them is to, uh, uh, to have a better quality uh, of life for our patients and not only uh, to have a, a, a long uh, lifespan. Because if you have a long lifespan uh, a span and a poor quality of life, what are you doing to, our, to uh, the patients? Uh, I think it's important to have a good quality of life and uh, the biomarkers will help us a lot in this. So, you know, uh, during the whole journey, there is a place for these uh, markers and there is a growing indication for, uh, for these uh, cardiac biomarkers. Communication is very important. The communication has proven that uh, when we meet together, we can understand each other's problems, each other pitfalls. So the, the, the lab people will understand what the clinicians uh, uh, are worried about, uh, what uh, are their needs, and we also understand what they are doing in their labs. So this, um, these meetings are very important, especially with the nephrology patient uh, people. For example, a nephrologist doesn't want to ask for a troponin. It's always high in, in renal failure. He doesn't know about the kinetics of the troponin. He doesn't know uh, about the value of, uh, of a troponin. Uh, the same thing for anti-proby. NP, are you aware that uh, physician, chest physicians, pulmonologists in, in my country, they don't know a lot about anti-proby NP. They don't know the difference between BNP and anti-proby NP. And they receive a lot of patients with th shortness of breath. And uh, we have every week patients referred from them uh, for cardiac evaluation. When we do the anti-proby NP, it's uh, very low. So 
they uh, they didn't have to send them to us to lose time and they they pay money and uh, we uh, it's uh, really important to gather us together uh, to try to understand each other's uh, pitfalls and difficulties and this is uh, really uh, what i found in this meeting very important very useful uh, that we discuss together about uh, uh, the pitfalls and about the problems we are facing